Hello, gemstone hunter. What if I told you that some plants, simple plants that you may have seen today without paying attention, can reveal exactly where rubies and even diamonds are hidden? It sounds crazy, I know. But there are species that only grow when the soil is rich in valuable minerals, like secret markers left by nature itself. Most people walk right past them, but those who know what to look for see very clear signs that there's a treasure right there under their feet. And today, I'm going to show you the three plants that experts use to locate deposits that no one else notices. This knowledge is so exclusive that it can transform a simple walk into a real discovery. By the way, before continuing, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because what you're going to learn here is something that almost no one teaches, and you won't want to miss the next step in this journey. When I walk through a silent field, I always feel that nature is speaking to me even before I understand the words. The wind brushes against my skin as if carrying ancient stories, and each leaf vibrating around me seems to reveal a secret kept for centuries. And you know, I've learned to pay attention to these details because I've discovered that the earth always reveals where its treasures are. The colors change. The smells change. Even the way the ground responds to my step reveals what's hidden beneath. Many people pass through these places as if they were just ordinary landscapes. But I see maps. I think of ancient African peoples following trails of vegetation to find rubies, or Asian communities who knew, long before modern science, that certain shrubs only grow on kimberlites, the rocks that form diamonds. As I walk, I realize that each little plant that sprouts there has a function, a message, a role. And when I look at them, I don't just see plants, I see clues. And perhaps the most fascinating thing is realizing how this wisdom comes from afar, from long before you and me. I remember stories of explorers who crossed deserts simply by observing the color of leaves, or of prospectors who discovered giant deposits because they noticed that a specific shrub only flourished on soils rich in corundum, the mineral that gives rise to rubies and sapphires. When I touch the earth, I feel the different texture when there are hidden minerals, and I know that plants absorb each one of them, transforming it into color, resistance, shape, as if they were silent translators of what lies beneath the surface. That's why I always say, to find precious stones, you don't need to start by looking at the ground. You need to look at what grows above it. And while I tell you this, I'm already preparing to show you something even more surprising. How exactly these plants manage to reveal the location of rubies and diamonds without anyone noticing. When I started studying field geology, one thing surprised me deeply. The number of natural signs that had always been right in front of me and that I simply ignored. One of the plants that caught my attention the most was the indigofera. It's not flashy. It has nothing exotic about it. And for that very reason, almost everyone passes by it without appreciating it. But every time I saw one of these sprouting in dry soil, I started to notice a pattern. Almost always, the terrain had the presence of heavy minerals such as iron, manganese, and even chromium, which are also associated with rocks that can host rubies. Realizing this changed the way I walk in natural areas. Suddenly, each shrub seemed to have a story to tell. And when I finally confirmed that geologists actually use this plant as a natural marker in gemological regions, everything made even more sense. By the way, if you've already found this plant in your region, comment below. I really want to know where it's appearing. Another plant that I've learned to respect is the Hymatoxylum, often called the Gold Tree by the more experienced residents of some regions. The first time I heard this nickname, I thought it was an exaggeration, until I understood the reason. Its root has the ability to absorb and accumulate elements such as iron and other minerals that are usually present in gold-bearing terrains. Its color changes. The structure of the wood also seems to adapt, as if the entire plant functioned as a natural sensor. I remember walking through an area of red gravel and noticing several of these trees lined up. At that time, I didn't know, but today I perfectly understand that that alignment indicated an ancient hydrothermal alteration zone, exactly the type of region where gold usually appears. 
This type of detail completely changes the game for those who know how to observe. And while you're at it, if this type of content helps you, leave a like so I know you want more practical analyses like this. The third plant is, for me, the most fascinating of all. The Pandanus, she prefers extremely specific soils, generally rich in magnesium and iron, which are usually linked to ultra-basic rocks. And this type of environment is exactly where diamond-bearing formations, such as kimberlites, can occur. I remember the first time I walked through an area with tall, well-developed pandanus. I still had no idea where I was, but an experienced geologist in the group looked around and said, if I had to bet on a diamond-bearing target, it would be here. That sparked a huge light in my head. It wasn't magic. It wasn't luck. It was environmental reading. Over time, I started noticing similar patterns in other places. And that's when I realized some plants really are clues, living clues, in fact, to something much larger hidden underground. And here's an important point. It's not enough to just know the plant's name. You need to understand the context of the soil, the climate, the type of exposed rock, the surrounding growth pattern, and the repetition of that species in a particular area of the landscape. When you put all that together, the plant ceases to be just a clue and becomes a real prospecting tool used for decades but little publicized. That's why, when I say that learning to see these species can completely change the way you explore the world, I'm not exaggerating. But of course, interpreting natural signs requires practice, patience, and a good eye for detail. Also, comment below which of these three plants you've seen in your region, and if you'd like me to make a video showing how to identify each one in practice, just ask. Oh, and don't forget to like the video, because that really helps me continue bringing you exclusive content like this. When I started applying what I learned about these plants, I realized that the secret lies not only in knowing the name of each species, but in recognizing subtle signs in the field. For example, the indigofera, it has small grayish green leaves, but what really catches the eye is the type of soil it grows in, generally sandy, dry, and slightly reddish, indicating the presence of heavy minerals. I always carry a magnifying glass with me, not out of whim, but to observe minute details like small veins in the leaves that show the absorption of iron and chromium. A small knife also helps, in case I want to analyze the root and see how it adapts to the soil, and I always take photographs to compare patterns. It's impressive how small details, color, size, leaf position, can be more revealing than any geological map. And while I'm teaching this, I invite you to interact. Comment here if you've observed similar plants in your region. The second plant, the Hematoxylum, it's particularly fascinating because its presence indicates soils rich in minerals like iron and aluminum. I usually observe the density of the shrub and how it clusters. Repetitive patterns generally point to areas with greater mineral potential. When I started, I tested soil samples from the surrounding area, mixing small portions with water to notice color changes, and this helped me confirm the presence of relevant minerals. Furthermore, the shape of the leaves and the strength of the stem are clear signs of adaptation to specific soils. I always say that every detail counts. Even the plant's shadow can indicate the depth of the root system and, consequently, where minerals accumulate. If you already make such observations in your yard or on trails, leave a comment sharing your experience. The third, Pandanus. This plant is perhaps the most precise of the three because it only grows in magnesium-rich soils and near kimberlites, places where diamonds can form. I learned to identify this plant by observing the texture of the foliage and the resistance of the young trunks. Small undulations in the leaves indicate intense mineral absorption. I always take notes on the environment, whether there are exposed rocks, whether the soil is moist or dry, whether there are other nearby species that grow in symbiosis. Combining direct observation and simple soil tests, you can map promising areas even without advanced equipment. And believe me, after a few weeks of practice, you start to notice patterns you never imagined existed, as if nature were leaving small clues only for those who know how to observe. And here's the point that really makes a difference. Even without being a geologist or specialist, 
Anyone can start identifying these plants with a few simple tools. A magnifying glass, a small knife, photographic records, and if possible, basic soil tests. I always encourage those who are learning to create a field journal, noting colors, shapes, patterns, and associations with other species. This way, you build your own natural map, which grows and becomes more accurate with each new observation. And before we move on to real discoveries and stories, I want to ask you, have you ever found any of these plants or something similar on trails, in backyards, or in open areas? Comment here, share your experience, and leave a like, because the more you interact, the more practical and detailed tips I can bring you. I've been to Madagascar, hiking along nearly deserted trails, and I was struck by a plant I immediately recognized, typical of soils rich in corundum. Following that living trail, local researchers discovered ruby deposits that no one had mapped before. I could feel at that moment how nature truly speaks. We just need to learn to listen. Later, in Australia, I accompanied geologists tracking a magnesium-resistant species. It was incredible how, simply by observing the plant growing in specific terrains, they were able to identify kimberlites full of microdiamonds. And that's when I realized something. These plants act as silent guides, almost as if the soil itself were pointing to its riches. What fascinates me most is that these discoveries don't just happen on distant maps or in sophisticated laboratories. They happen where you least expect them, sometimes in seemingly ordinary or even abandoned areas. It's as if nature leaves silent clues, waiting for attentive eyes that recognize subtle patterns and signs. I remember one day finding a small plant hidden among ordinary stones, and upon analyzing the soil, I confirmed it was exactly the kind of environment where experienced prospectors would find valuable minerals. Each of these experiences reinforced my conviction that observing vegetation is often more efficient than any modern prospecting tool. And as I share these stories, I'm already preparing you for the next step. Learning to transform this perception into emotional transformation and a philosophy of life. Because believe me, recognizing signs from nature goes far beyond finding precious stones. How many times have I missed something valuable without realizing it? simply because I didn't know where to look. And I'm sure you felt that way too, even in small, everyday things. It's like walking through a field full of telltale plants and not recognizing the signs they offer. Each leaf, each growth pattern, each color is a silent warning that most ignore. When I learned to observe these clues, I realized that the true treasure isn't just in precious stones, but in the ability to see invisible opportunities around you to train your eye and attention to details that can change everything. These plants have become my favorite metaphor for everything precious and silent in life. They grow hidden, ignored, but carry secrets that transform the destiny of those who perceive them. This taught me to value small signs, to have patience, and to understand that opportunities often only reveal themselves to those who observe carefully. And while I share this with you, I ask you, how many chances have you missed because you weren't paying attention? In the next step, I'll show you how to apply all this knowledge in practice, transforming perception into real action and concrete results. Now that you know these plants and how they reveal the secrets of the soil, I want you to start applying this knowledge in practice. Look around your city, backyard or trails, observe patterns, colors and shapes, and notice what others miss. Comment here. I follow nature's clues. If you're ready to train your eye and discover hidden treasures. And don't forget to download my free mini guide with photos and characteristics of these indicator plants. So you'll always have a practical reference at hand. Like this video, share it with friends who also want to learn to see the invisible. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next discoveries. The more you practice and observe, the more you will notice signs that previously went unnoticed. Remember, the next ruby or diamond may be hidden right under a plant you've always ignored. So let's embark on this journey of attention, learning, and constant discovery together. So the next time you find an ordinary plant growing where nothing else grows, 
Remember, it may be hiding something precious, just waiting for you to notice. Every detail of nature is a sign, and training your eye is learning to see invisible opportunities. And if you want to continue discovering hidden secrets right under your nose, be sure to click and watch this video here in sequence. They look like ordinary stones, but they are rare minerals for which collectors pay a high price. He shows how seemingly simple things can have surprising value. Nature speaks to me, and now I want it to speak to you too. Pay attention, practice observation, and see how each step transforms into discovery. The more you learn to listen, the more life reveals its hidden treasures. See you later, gemstone hunter.